Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Massey United Insurance's Line and Length. This is a cricket program where we look at the sport, not only in the region, but internationally as well. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Hello to all of our friends on Digicel Sports Max and wherever else you're watching this broadcast. What an episode we have for you today. Let's tell you what we're going to be talking about. We're going to look at some fantastic highlights now that the Ashes um, has come to a big break. It's England 3, Australia 1. They have crashed the Australians and we're going to look at just why. A man who has played cricket for England is going to join us in the studio to discuss the final test match and look back at the first four. We're also going to go to Sri Lanka and have a look at that series. The Sri Lankans having a very tough time post Mihaela Jai Warden. And let me tell you, they're also going to have to learn to play without Sangakara. This is his swung song, but it didn't make a big difference as they uh, struggled in the early part of that test match against the Indians. We're going to look at some of the outstanding players in that game. The T20 blast is going quite well in England. David Willey slammed the eighth fastest T20 century highlights from that plus the thoughts of our guest on F. Willie is indeed the next sensation to play T20 cricket. Not to forget home drums being last on this occasion. It has been well mooted for a while that the West Indies are not going to be in the Champions Trophy. That now seems to be confirmed. And unfortunately, what does that mean and in terms of the implications for the future of one day cricket in the West Indies? All that and much more in the next half an hour of Massey United Insurance's Lightning Line. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Welcome back on the program. We're going to start first of all with the all-important Ashes series. England really unfair the Australians after uh, four matches. It's England three, Australia one. But it has been the manner in which the English have been so dominant against the Australians that has caught everyone by surprise. With us on our program is a man who has played cricket for England and of course for Barbados, Roland Butcher, an honour to have him on the show. Uh, Roland, it's so good to have you. Andrew Seeley has been doing his stats, which we're going to uh, sneak into in, a, in a just a moment. Roland, the first question that we must put to you regarding how England have dominated this Ashes series with one test to go, are you surprised by the manner in which they have bullied the Australians? <laughs> Well, Barry, first of all, I would like to say congratulations to England on actually winning the series. Um, at the beginning of the series, I felt that this would have been a two-all draw. I just didn't feel that Australia had enough to beat England. But at the same time, England still had to prove themselves as a test player inside after what's happened in recent times. So in terms of what's happened in this series, it is a little bit surprising, but not surprising the way the games have gone. England winning convincingly in the first game, Australia winning even more convincingly in the second and then England winning the next two. So I'm a bit surprised the way the Australians have capitulated in these last two test matches. But at the same time, I'm not surprised. Home court advantage rule, and this has been discussed uh, over and over. And the whole question of the Ashes, now it seems as if the winner of the Ashes is very much dependent on where it's played. Your thoughts on home court advantage? It's very important. I think you saw in Australia, they used to their advantage their home court in the last Ashes series in the 1-5-0. Coming to England, um, Australian sides in the past have always struggled. You have to go back beyond 2005 for Australia Ashes Series victory in England. So they didn't come with a great record. If you look at their team, uh, there's very few players in the side with English experience. Mm -hmm. I think Rogers is the only one who played for Middlesex the last three or four years. Even the same Michael Clark hasn't got a great record in England. All the other batsmen, they don't, they've never really played in English conditions. So I expected that if there was any movement at all, during the series that they would be in trouble, and it's proven so. You know, you know the decline of Michael Clark and his ultimate uh, announcement that he's retiring after the last test caught me by surprise for one reason. He stopped playing T20 and one-day cricket to concentrate on test cricket. And now that has gone bum. So his cricket career has virtually gone bum. Did, did his decline and the swiftness of his decline surprise you? And, and how he was so honest about it as well. Did that surprise you about Clark? 
Well, I think it's a knee jerk reaction by Clark. I don't feel really he should have retired from Test cricket. If his back is holding up and his fitness is good, I think he should play because he's proven he's been a quality player. There has not been many times in his career that he has gone through a drought of not scoring runs. So he's still a, a top class player. I think he's deeply hurt by the fact that they've been beaten so badly in England, having won the series 5 0 in Australia. But I thought as an Australian, it would be a lot tougher than that and perhaps see the series out and try to prolong his career. In terms of aggression, we, we, we think of Australians as perhaps being the most aggressive players. I think perhaps in the UK this summer, rule, and I don't know if you would agree with me, that they have been too aggressive. They have attempted to attack and knock Anderson and Broad out of the attack, and this has not worked. In fact, it has backfired on them. Well, I think it goes back to the series in Australia, where they, they bullied the English completely, um, to the point where they taunted... Um, Jonathan Trott and Kevin Peterson and all sorts of people. Now they felt they could go to England and do the same, but their record does not suggest that they could do that in England. Even with better sides in England, they have struggled. So it has not paid off for them. And I think a big thing that happened to them really that they couldn't get over was the loss of Ryan Harris at the start of the series. He is the one bowler with a decent record in England and would have bowled well in these conditions and with no Peter Siddle as well. Um, so all in all, Johnson, He's the type of bowler in bouncy wickets because he hits the ball into the pitch. Difficult proposition. In England, you've got to pitch the ball up and make it swing. Uh, Mitchell Stark, I think he's a good bowler. He's learning his game. But generally, they have no backup. So they should not have used the approach of trying to bully England in England. In England. Well, Josh Hazelwood is uh, still a very good prospect. But like you said, um, he was at some stages um, bowling by himself. And... Michael Clark, many people didn't believe, utilized his uh, bowling attack uh, very well. There was one particular test, I think it was the, uh, the third test, um, that Hazelwood did not bowl for the entire two-hour session. And many people were surprised as to how Clark was utilize, utilizing his bowling. It's something called pressure, Barry. I think yeah. Michael Clark was under so much pressure. At one stage, you could look at him and see he didn't know what to do next because everything he had tried before had not worked and it was surprising because I think the Australians came, if you listen to Shane Watson or Ricky Ponting, uh, sorry Shane Warren or Ricky Ponting, the, the impression given was that the Australians were coming, as you said, to bully England and when it didn't work, they didn't have a fallback position. The other, the other thing is, Barry, is that I, I find the Australians are fairly one directional. Mm -hmm. um, they seem to, wherever they want to play, they win the toss, they want to bat. That's not always the, kid, the best thing to do. You have to sum up the conditions and decide you know what's going and that that, that fourth oh, test anyway, that wait, fourth wait, test it backfired <laughs> big time yeah big time now um two quick questions on this before we shut this segment down steve smith is he going to be the obvious successor to michael clark and uh, where do you see it going from here now for australian cricket well at this stage i think steve smith will um take over because he stood in for michael clark in the past and he scored 300 in his first three games so he's obviously the man in front um, as far as Australian cricket is concerned, I think Australian cricket is still in good order. It's not in England in good order, but I think they've got to maintain what they have got and go back to the other areas and perform. I think England and India are areas that's given them problems. In Australia, New Zealand, those areas, they're extremely strong. So I don't think that they have to change a lot at this stage. All right. Wonderful stuff. All right. Thank you so much uh, from the uh, knowledgeable voice of a man who has played cricket for England. He didn't happen to play in any ashes, but he told me that's because uh, he was dropped for a, a lack of form. That probably answers the question. All right. When we come back in our second segment, we're going to look at the West Indies. We're also going to look at that Sri Lanka and India series. It's turning out to be pretty interesting. The Sri Lankans are struggling at home. When we come back. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. We're back on the program. Don't forget you can reach us by email cricket at linealength.net or you can also uh, find us on Twitter or handle us at linelength. It's been a, a great time for international cricket, although the West Indies are not playing right now. Um, you know, you look at the series that's going on with Sri Lanka and India and you have to admire 
uh, how the Indians have uh, picked the pieces up because they haven't had the best of times test cricket wise recently but they've gone into Sri Lanka so far and they've dominated in this series against the Indians you look at how well uh, Ravindra Ashwin is bowling six wicket haul on his uh, very first day back out after a pretty tough series last year I want to talk about him. I want to talk about this series. How good is Ashwin in his own conditions? Seems to be a master. Well, I mean, you should be a master in your own conditions. Um, it seems that we're the only ones who don't um, see it that That's way. That's why I asked you the question, because, that because well, I asked you how good is a man in his own conditions, and I can't answer the same well, question. You need to be. In India, Ashwin would be a master. In Australia, my, um, Johnson is. In England, um, James right. Anderson. So you should be a master in your backyard. Um, this series is obviously... I would expect India to win because, I mean, with Sri Lanka without Jared Wardner, they don't seem to have any quality bowlers at the moment as well. So, you know, India is still a very strong side and they've got a very powerful batting lineup. Now, you know, Andrew, this, this is really the start of the cricketing year for India. Um, the way their season, when the IPL finishes, they take a break. Uh, they have some hectic series coming up. Um, <clears throat> Mahendra Singh Dhoni is gone. There's a new keeper. But there's also a new captain in Virat Kohli. He stamped his authority, sentry, in uh, that first innings in Sri Lanka. Well, he said he's always wanted to be captain, so he's got it now. But he's also said he wants five bowlers. So for the first time in a while, India are playing five batsmen. The wicketkeeper, new Saha, uh, not so new, he's been around, but Saha batting at six and five bowlers. This, this is the combination that Kohli says he wants, which is different from what Mahindra Singh Dhoni had done before. He used to play six batsmen with himself at seven. But Kohli is stamping his authority on. He's gone with Shikhar Dawan, who also scored a century. That's right. So the, the, the runs are wrong. Uh, Rohit Sharma was unavailable due to injury so we have a, a new kind of new Indian combination and it'll be interesting to see how this new Indian combination will work not only in India or Sri Lanka but outside. How, are you impressed with, with Kohli's uh, leadership? Do you think it will affect his batting? It hasn't so far but do you think it will ultimately? I don't think so. I think Kohli looks a very strong-minded uh, player. I mean he's shown in the past that he, he doesn't even get intimidated by the Australians. I mean, he's the one that does the intimidating. So I like him for that. I think he's going to be different to Donny. Donny was a little bit conservative um, in his captaincy. As Andrew said, he liked to play a lot of batsmen. I think Coley is now going for the five bowlers because to win matches, you must bowl sides out. He's got a good young batters. I mean, he's got Pajar, he's got Sharma to come, Rahani. So they've got some batsmen that can give him scores on, on, on the board. It has generally felt too that Shikadar, who, who we mentioned, that he could have been in trouble if he didn't score some runs or start to score some runs. Started this series with a century. Do you think that he, uh, you know, when he started, he had a reputation of being potentially world class, but he, is, he, he faltered. Do you think that, uh, you know, he is that good to be a world class cricketer? Test cricket-wise? I think he's a very good player. I mean, his record shows that he's, he's going to be a good player. Um, I remember we had him down here in about 2006. We, we got him to come down and play for the um, Vice Chancellor's eleven against South Africa. That's right. And he looked a good player then. It's taken him a long time to break in, but I think we've got to be patient with him. Test cricket is different to first-class cricket. So he may be bullying cricket in first-class cricket. He's not going to learn the game, and he's learning quite well at, for, at international level. Now, post Kumar Sangakara, this is his song song. There's no Mihaila Jai Warden anymore. Should I look a very ordinary batting team? The West Indies head there at the end of the year. Um, I don't want to say if there's going to be a good chance for them to get into all of that just yet. But Sri Lanka, they seem to be a, a team that's also peeling. They're rebuilding. How important is it for them to, to try and have some kind of dominance in, in this series? I think against West Indies, they, they certainly must try to win that series. And I expect West Indies will not have an easy time in, in Sri Lanka. I, on, I expect that the wickets will turn. The Sri Lankans will play better on those pitches than we will. Uh, they will have the bowlers who can exploit those conditions. And a lot of you know, people like Chandamal now has to step up and be ensure what a good player he is. He's a good young player, but he now has to step up and take over from Jay Warner and Sangakara. How good is Angelo Matthews as a captain of the Sri Lankan team? It's obviously a very challenging time because to lose Mahila Jai Wardner first and then Kumar Sangakara, how good is Angelo Matthews? Is he a better batsman than bowler? Your thoughts? His record has shown that um, in recent times that he, he seems to be a better batsman than a bowler. But he, he would have to captain in a different fashion now. Where with Sangakara gone and Jai Wardner, I think he can now exert himself. I mean, it is not easy for a man who perhaps trying to find himself at international level having to captain two players like that. And, and Dilshan, it is not an easy task. 
So I think he should relax a lot better now they've gone, and he should be a much better captain. And Sangakara, I mean, a, a legend. <laughs> One of the greatest players that ever played this game, no question about it. I mean, he scored runs heavy runs against everybody, everywhere. Must go down as one of the all-time greats of, of international cricket. Michael Holden said, be careful using this word great, huh, Roland? He did, but I'm using great oh. because I think Sangha Carr was a great player. <laughs> All right, great stuff, great stuff. When we come back on the program in our final segment, we're going to look at the West Indies in terms of them not going to the Champions Trophy. And also we're going to show you some highlights of a, a youngster uh, by the name of uh, David Willey, who is set in England alight with some exciting batting. <laughs> Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. We're back for the final segment of Mass United Insurance's line and length. Uh, the West Indies, well, the news not so good for them in terms of them participating in the uh, Champions Trophy for 2016. It appears that the qualification deadline of September 30th will see them at number nine, and only the top eight will be going through to play in that Champions Trophy. Once champions in 2004, 11 years ago, uh, the, we always look back at the, the memorable picks of Ian Bradshaw and Courtney Brown uh, on the ground celebrating with the rest of the team after that uh, tremendous victory in the dark in England. And they've come pretty close again. In fact, uh, a couple of years after that, they went to the finals again. Uh, but they didn't manage to beat Australia on that occasion. So the, the West Indies have had some, some good times at the Champions Trophy. In the last edition in England, had it not been for the Duckworth Lewis against that game against South Africa, they might have even got to the semi-finals. But no, for the first time, no West Indies at the Champions Trophy. How does that strike you? How will that impact on the uh, legacy of West Indies cricket in terms of world tournaments? I think it's very unfortunate that West Indies are not in this tournament, I think somebody took the eye off the ball. Um, basically, the, where we were in the rankings, I don't think that we could have been as casual as we have been, um, relying on one series to perhaps get our ranking up. So really, the ball was, the eye was taken off the ball, we find ourselves in this position. And once Pakistan made a decision that they made, um, it suddenly woke people up to the fact that we're going to miss this and it's too late. Yeah. It's certainly too late, but as Barry mentioned, the legacy of the Champions Trophy and the performance of West Indies in the Champions Trophy. It's my understanding that the England and Wales Cricket Board are very upset not having a West Indies team at the ICC Champions Trophy in the UK in 2016. Something to look forward to, the possibility of a tremendous fan base in the Cav. A Caribbean people in the UK and certainly the ECB from a marketing point of view, perhaps also from a cricketing point of view, no West Indies uh, absolutely means no Chris Gale, etc, etc. Well, you can look at that two ways. Either they're, you know, wanting it more than we want it, or they're really saying that, hang on, your administration is pretty poor. So you can look at it how you want to look at it. Um, either way, um, they're not there and it's a great shame because I think the players have been let down in this, and we have been let down in this area. And of course, the Champions Trophy, we had had, there has been some discussion uh, by the ICC as to whether the viability of the ICC Champions Trophy, but we are proceeding with it and it still seems to be a money spinner for the ICC. Well, it is. I mean, there are not many 50 over competitions um, nationally, so I think they need to hang on to this one. Um, it's an important one. I think the teams over the years have looked forward to it and uh, it's a great shame that West Indies will not be part of this one. How do you see it now without the West Indies? I mean, the other teams are in it. Um, any potential uh, favourites at this stage? Well, I think the usual suspects will still be in there. Um, Australia, India. Um, England playing at home. England. South Africa. Um, Not, yeah, never so a winner, but always South Africa, always say, yeah. you know, South Africa semi-finalists, <laughs> the, usual, the usual thing. But the usual suspects will be there. I mean, Pakistan, you can't write them off because who knows? I, I want to ask you this question. Do you think that the cricketing world, commercially, would have preferred the West Indies or Pakistan in that last Or day? Bangladesh. 
they are there, they're Bangladesh are there. Yeah. I think they would have liked the West Indies to be there because the West Indies more so than Pakistan. Well, in in England. You know, that's a toss up. Isn't that's it? a toss yeah. up because yeah. you're thinking about crowds and um, sponsorship and whatever, and really there's a huge um, Pakistani um, following in England in terms of the the amount of people that live there and the ones that come in. So, in terms of the West, missing the West Indies, I think they will miss them because they bring a certain vibrant a vibrancy to the to the cricket, even though they may not be doing badly because even though they might be doing well. But people expect from the West Indies that on their day they could beat anyone. So they bring that unpredictability about them. So they will be missed, but at the same time, the competition will go ahead and um, it will be a good competition and somebody else will win it. All right. Now, uh, as we switch topics, still talking about one day cricket, but T20. Sussex played against Northamptonshire. Uh, that was on Wednesday in the T20 Blast. And what we saw from a 25 year old English batsman called David Willey. It was indeed a sensational T20 innings. He scored 100 from 41 balls. He had 10 sixes and seven fours and looked to be a very aggressive player. Now, for those of you who don't know David Willey, he's actually the son of uh, former England umpire Peter Willey. And um, he, he, he looks to me like a good prospect. The eighth fastest T20 century. He's only played one T20 for England. Looking at that innings, it was the talk of the tongue this week. Cricket-wise, were you impressed by what you saw? Before I go there, Barry, don't forget Peter Willey was an England player. Peter That's Willey, right. Peter Willey scored 100 in Antigua in the Test match. That's so right. So he was a very good player and as he well. Li he liked the playing against the West Indies. But do you think people remember him? What do you think people remember him most as? Umpire cricket. Well, I, I, I think... Well, I mean, jo Jonathan Angley also played Test cricket for England. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he could be remembered for that as well. Yeah. But um, getting back to David Willey, um, it was a great innings. Um, it's a one-off innings. That's his first T20 hundred. So I don't think you can get carried away. He's going to be under pressure to get into an England side on a regular basis when you've got people like Morgan, you've got James Taylor, um, people, you know, people who he's fighting against. So you know, he's got to do a lot more than just score that 100 to, to get into the side. What looks special about him to you? Um, I, d I wouldn't say that anything looks special to him. But I've known him for a long time and I, I've, see, I've seen him play. Um, I think you know he, he's no better than anyone else in England in terms of, of batsmanship. I think in many ways he's, he's behind a lot of the players. Do you think he's just, just, a, it he, had, he had a good day? Right? He had okay. a great day. We saw uh, the return of Christopher Jordan in that game playing for Sussex. Didn't have didn't have a great time. Uh, really took after took on took him on and I actually got 18 runs and one over of of Jordan. Uh, the return of Christopher Jordan. How difficult or easy is it for Jordan to get back into the U the England setup? Well, in, in one day cricket, particularly T20, it, it will be difficult because if you're coming back off injury, um, T20 is not about defensive cricket. People are just going after you all the time. And Hove is one of the best places to ever bat in, in, in your life. So it wouldn't have been easy for him coming back. He looked a bit rusty, but really he needs to get some four-day cricket behind him so that he can bowl long spells and get the batsman leaving balls. But in T20 cricket, they're going to go after every ball. So it, it was a tough one for him. Uh, the the game itself was an interesting one because some some big names were playing Mahila Jar Warden, Michael Beer from Australia. So, but North but North Ants prevailed and have gone on to the T20 Blast Finals there, the big finals there. Well, that's a good result for Northampton because they're a fairly unfashionable county. They don't get the biggest of players mm -hmm. um, going to Northampton, so it's a good result for them to actually get to the finals. And um, I know they've had a clean out in recent times in terms of chief executive, etc. So they've changed the whole system over the last year or so. So it's good luck to them. Being from England, Roland, and looking at the T20 competition there, um, it doesn't seem as exciting of, uh, like, out of all of the leagues, IPL, Big Bash, the CPL, which is really rising. The T20 league seems still very traditional. Well, it is traditional because it's still amongst the counties. It is not, um, it's not, a, it's not a franchise. It's not like the but, CPL. Well, people would argue that the, the counties are franchise-based. I mean, well, there are, there are in a sense, but they're still county-based. Um, I think the difficulty of having a, a franchise competition in England is that the counties still need to make money to survive. They cannot rely on the ECB. So to just have a franchise competition, yeah. that will be a problem for the counties in terms of their revenue. So the other thing also now to fit in another tournament into an English schedule, which usually has five or six test matches a year is going to be very difficult. So I think they're trying to get the balance right between what the counties can do for themselves. And, and as you can see from the crowds that go to the T20s, they're very good crowds. So each county is able to you know, support themselves.
All right. Thanks so much, Roland Butcher. It's been a pleasure having Roland and, of course, uh, Andrew Silly again on the program. Continue to send your emails, cricket at linelength.net, or uh, you can go on Twitter, and our handle there is at linelength. This has been another edition of Mass United Insurance's Line and Length. The uh, final test match with England and Australia starts on Digicel Sports Max on August the 20th. Um, someone's birthday, I think, is on August the 20th. Yeah, we'll talk about that next yeah, week. we'll talk about that next week. All right, so bye-bye for now. Have a wonderful week, and be here next week again as we review what's happening in the world of cricket.